Welcome back everyone, it's theCUBE live at Dell Tech World. Day three of our wall-to-wall -wall coverage of this 2023 event. Coming to you live from Las Vegas, the Mandalay Bay. Lisa Martin and Dave Vellante. We got some stuff to show and tell to you. We're going to be digging into Dell's XR class of servers and how and why they're purpose built for the edge. Two guests are going to help unlock all this knowledge on you. Kyle Ilgen joins us, consultant, product management at Dell Technologies, and Arno Langer, global senior product director, edge and IoT at Atos. Guys, great to have you. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Walk us through the, you What have we got here? Have. Yeah, what have we got here? <laughs> we got some toys. Yeah, so um, with us today is uh, actually the XR7620, um, and then we also have a gateway product line. Um, so these two products are part of our broader Edge portfolio. Uh, I, if you've been paying attention to anything at Dell Tech World, Edge is kind of the hot thing right now. Um, and so we're backing that up with not just uh, the software and everything you've heard, but we also have a, an extensive Edge product portfolio line on our Power Edge servers uh, that are purpose built from the ground up to operate in non-data center environments. So as data is being pushed out to the edge, we're trying to pull that data into a centralized location at the point of discovery rather than putting it all the way back to a data center. Got it. And that's what we, uh, we have been uh, really attracted to with Dell, is uh, the, the breadth of the portfolio of devices, right? Um, when, because of our offering has, uh, let's say, the entire chain of data, we are able to pick and choose the device we need or we want for either a small form factor to ingest a little bit of data or like a bigger one to do an ingestion right at the edge. So that's why we've been collaborating for a long time with, uh, with Dell on that. So we've been talking all week about Dell's strategy, horizontal, and then partner to go deeper into the verticals. Is that, is that what's going on here? Um, what's the relationship between your two firms? So with, um, with Native Edge that has been uh, announced yesterday at Dell, uh, and we've been collaborating with that team for quite some time on the horizontal, let's say, backbone of what you need for realizing business outcomes at the edge. And having the capability to have the right hardware at the right place with the, the streaming data platform, which is a Dell product as well, to orchestrate the data streaming from one end to the other and have the analytics running on either that or a bigger cluster, that, that, has, that creates like the tool set you need to have an end-to-end -end value prop for your for our customers where we can ingest data, realize the business value, all that in a single box, if you will. Okay, so can you take us through that a little bit more? So you're ingesting the data, and then, so uh, double click on what people are actually doing with this. Is it AI inferencing at the edge? Is it processing data? Is it persisted? Uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, that? so we're, we're seeing a wild, wild range of <laughs> opportunities in I'll this bet. space. <laughs> so the edge is pretty fragmented in terms of what customers and industries and stuff, but the interesting thing we've found, and we went out and talked to hundreds of customers, um, Everybody on the edge space has very similar goals and similar limitations with their hardware and what they're trying to build it out. So even though you might have a manufacturer who needs to have real-time AI because their machine needs to shut down for safety reasons in a millisecond, you might also have a retailer who's trying to do facial recognition to garner better data for their rewards program based on how many times people visit. So all of that is enabled by the hardware at the end of the day. Um, and if the hardware doesn't work, then nothing else works. But the use cases are wide enough that we had to build hardware that, to Arno's point, you go from the data creation and, and the ingest all the way up to something big like the Sexar 7620 that can do a bunch of AI, ML, or whatever else in between. And to double click on your question precisely on the, the artificial intelligence, well, if you look at that ingestion, we might want to look at something smaller to be like really spread in the field close to where the data is created. And then indeed you need like a, like a server like the 7620 where we can have two GPUs to accelerate data processing on the stream of data that's created to have like a, a very strong and, and fast analytics on the, on the AI ML uh, right at the edge. So, so these would complement each other in that example, yes. is that right? Yeah, so we would have a set of, so we would have like multiple of these that gather the data from different objects or data sources, then then concentrate all that into either a set of these, usually a cluster of three, just for redundancy. That can be that one, that can be any other server of the, the Edge portfolio, like the XR4000, which is also geared for the Edge and as a cluster, but that would be like, 
let's say, dozens of these and three of those. And you persist the data at the edge? You send it back somewhere to a data center or the cloud or you wipe it out or is it ephemeral? General answer is yes. Yes, yes, and yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So um, we would have like uh, either some onboard storage with some like distributed storage in a core or cloud, but we, we try to keep everything on-prem to have like uh, the, the, the fast and the, the speed to access the data and, uh, and resolution of, uh, yeah. of issues. So. Carl, you mentioned talking with hundreds of customers. We've been talking with a lot of Dell folks <laughs> and partners the last couple days, and, and then we keep hearing this theme of big ears. Dell has big ears yes. in a good way. It's like, yeah. it's like a, uh, a Dumbo in a, in a just a loving way. But, but talk about, you mentioned some of the uses. Talk about some of the key industries, because one of the stats that I saw was like 80% of customers have said edge is one of the most important yeah. features to our success, whether it's a retailer, or manufacturer. Talk about some of the key industries yeah. where this is really going to be a game changer. So, everywhere, for one. I mean, I can cop out and say every industry is going to be changed, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, and so, Dell, of course, we see retail and manufacturing as kind of the first movers in this space. Um, they have instantaneous need because they're creating tons of data. So manufacturing is pretty obvious. You have tons of IT devices, OT devices, just all doing tons of different sensor data, et cetera. That makes a lot of sense that um, to the point of what do you do with the data, right now you don't have the choice but to either consolidate it and ship it off to a data center or do it right on site, and so we allow that. But then retail also has the benefits, but we're seeing a fast follow in a lot of other spaces like healthcare, where they have tons of uh, data centers as well. Mining, um, really anywhere where you could have data created outside of a data center environment, there is opportunity for edge growth and, and a compute instance in that space. And anytime we talk edge, we've got to talk security. So tell us what customers are asking you for and how you're responding to it. Yeah, yeah. so uh, in general, everything that's built into our data center servers, these are power edge servers, first and foremost. So all of the secure supply chain that we have, um, the secure sockets, uh, everything that's built into a Dell power edge server is baked into this. So we're one of the leaders in cybersecurity, you get that at the edge. Uh, on the edge, of course, there's other things that go on, so we actually have a couple features. There's a, uh, if I open this, and I'm not authorized, there is a sensor that'll say, hey, this was opened, you're not supposed to have it. Um, what's missing from here today uh, is that we also have a bezel that can go on the front, and it has two-fold, two reasons. Um, the bezel is a dust filter bezel, which is really cool, because anywhere you go, there's going to be dust. Um, but you can also put a bezel on here that's lockable. So it's a lockable bezel, and while if someone were to come in with a hacksaw and really just like go at it, um, they may be able to get past it, but they're going to create a lot of noise and it's not supposed to be there. So we've built in a lot of features and security features on the software side um, and the hardware side to make sure that everything's secure and you don't have bad actors working with your network. Yeah. And to touch upon the software side, um, <clears throat> what I mentioned earlier we have been collaborating with Dell on the Native Edge uh, platform. So that software stack that's running on top of the hardware is actually starts at the manufacturing of this hardware, meaning they are they start to put like um, encryption keys on the hardware to m ensure the, um, the authenticity of the hardware throughout its life cycle. From manufacturing to deployment to and through the life cycle to ensure there is no man in the middle that has been compromising the hardware itself. And then that allows you to have zero trust, zero touch deployment and monitoring. So with, through this entire manufacturing and life cycle of the hardware with Dell, you are able to have like an edge that's secured and therefore trusted. So full provenance all the way through the supply chain. And then native edge is how you manage, configure, yep. patch, et yeah. cetera. So I know we announced native edge today, so everyone's really excited, or yesterday. I, we're finally out of embargo. I was told I wasn't allowed to talk yeah, to Yeah, no, it's now, announced. So it's, we know it's that. Great. Yeah. <laughs> um, the cool thing is that that'll work on these. And so we work with the native edge team. Um, everything they're doing is to work on the XR platform. So whenever we deploy that native edge, the hardware works in it. And with that comes all the security suite as well. And it's available, you said today? Or? Yeah, so that's the exciting thing. So we're really proud to announce. Uh, we announced these at Mobile World Congress with y'all yeah. um, way back in the day. But uh, the XR4000, which is out in market since December, that's been shipping for a while. But the new XR5610 and the 7620, this is the 7620. Those are officially shipping today. So if you go on, you can order and kick it off and have one in your door, whatever the lead time is. Arno, talk about Telco. You mentioned, Kyle, we were all at MWC in Barcelona just a few months ago, lots of announcements there. But Arno, talk about 
this new powered series for telco and what Atos's involvement is in the partnership with Dell, specifically for telcos? Yeah, so um, one of the good things, so we don't have the 5610 here with us, but this, the other model, the 5610, has been really designed for telco core network operation. Therefore, it is like optimized to create, let's say, a 5G network at the base of a tower. That means that you, with these servers, and I mentioned earlier the, the breadth of the portfolio, we can we are able to pick and choose the right machine for the right use case. This is the right example, right? The 5610 is, has been the one designed to operate networks, so very high network speed to interact between the different nodes of the clusters and, and all that to operate a core network. That means that here you've got data collection, analytics, AI, ML inference, and core network for the other one. So we've been able to, that way, pick and choose from Dell's catalog, depending on which use case we wanted to solve for our customers. So and what's the state uh, these days of the 5G rollouts where this is going to be a, a, a good fit? So I know they're spending trillion dollars or whatever it is on the rollouts, but you know, we're waiting for that you know, day when the 5G actually is true 5G and, right? Well, uh, if, but I cannot answer your question by only saying, you see this server being released today, that's going to help enable and the 5G. And accelerate it. Right, yeah. and accelerate it. So, that, that's, um, 5G needs the edge, while the edge needs 5G as yeah, well. So you have to have both kind of technology catch up in order for 5G to actually deliver on its promise, which is new use cases like VR, AR, and stuff like that calculated right at the base of the tower, which was not uh, available before that. I mean, history shows that it will deliver on its promise eventually, right? We just, yeah. right? I mean, we just can't wait. And uh, <laughs> well, we did just release a product this week as well um, that actually takes XR four thousand and pilots it, and it has a private five G sector as well. So we do have products out there, and they were announced this week um, that do take that and consolidate it. So private five G is one of the things that's really driving, especially in the manufacturing range, where you have a limited capability on your manufacturing floor, and you need quick, quick, quick. Um, that's driving some of that, but to Arno's point, it's kind of, we're pushing back and forth on both sides, and um, I mean, for us, the beauty is you could potentially reduce your bandwidth if you have the compute on site, so you don't have to send so much stuff back out to the core. Yeah. Kind of interesting walking around here, Lisa and I have been talking, just the diversity of the ecosystem, you know, Edge is you know, one of the, the more prominent you know, areas and, and booths that we've seen, the discussion, different than say five years ago, like dramatically different, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely, I mean, what we see on our, on our side is uh, customers are more and more asking for a private 5G deployment, uh, probably, I would say, 10 to 20 times more than a private 4G deployment. Mm. Yeah, and then that, that means that the, the 5G, and because of the new capabilities from a software and application perspective, brings new ideas to, to end customers. And that means that uh, we're not even talking about 6G yet. I mean, I heard that yesterday and I was like, Let's just deliver on 5G first yeah, yeah. And, and make sure that we take the full benefit of that. I mean, as you mentioned, like trillions have been invested in 5G uh, w worldwide. So let's make sure that we have the right application there and, and there is a deep transformation. Manufacturing is probably one of the, the industries that will benefit it most, but that's for private 5G. The rest of the world will really benefit and probably more on the end consumer side for the, the actually the, the value and the application that can be on the public. 5G. Is the, is the reason, Arno, that the interest is so much higher in 5G, I mean, not, notwithstanding it's 5G, but the, the distributed nature of 5G, it's just more, of a greater affinity for that type of uh, deployment? Right, that's, I think that the first time we see the network actually able to deliver value more than just connectivity. Mm -hmm. Up until 4G, network was purely connectivity. Now we are able, and that brings a whole new dimension Dimension with um, orchestrating application deployments at the base of a tower. Because for example, I mean, if you have like ads coming on your uh, map right away because you are scanning the buildings around you and you have like a, a restaurant, you see a restaurant over there, that, that means that that needs to be computed at the base of the tower, of the cell tower you are connected to. That brings value, but that means that there is a change that needs to happen in the entire industry for advertising, for um, use cases, new applications being developed, AR, VR, all that has to take place. And, and that's why the whole, let's say, adoption of 5G is taking a lot of time because there is so much change brought by this new technology, which is actually a, a breadth of different technologies. It's interesting you mentioned beyond connectivity. I mean, the telcos have really done a good job of selling connectivity, but that's pretty much all they've sold. I mean, that's how they've, they've made money 
over the top vendors obviously have greatly succeeded. Do you think that the telcos, I mean, they've, they've said it, we saw this at MWC, they're like, we can't let that happen again. Um, <laughs> are you skeptical? <laughs> well, I think um, telcos are really uh, good at selling connectivity and the transformation of 5G is so deep that they themselves have to reinvent themselves. Like we, we've been partnering with a few telcos and each of them is like, all right, so we need to do edge because we, are, we try to sell 5G, therefore we need edge. Uh, how do we do edge? It's, it's a complete new uh, system, like mindset for them, right? Like how do we orchestrate application that's not network based? How do we orchestrate, um, um, let's say, value added? How do we sell that value? How do we orchestrate business oriented applications? So that's, that's a very different mindset from them too. So mm. that's why it's, in my opinion, that's why it's taking time to be adopted. But they own that infrastructure, so that should give them an advantage if they can move yeah. fast enough. I mean, they're certainly incented to do so. Um, <laughs> interesting conversation. <laughs> so we talked about the big years before, but I presume that you guys have been engaging with a lot of folks here at Dell Tech World 23. What's been some of the feedback in terms of what, um, you, what you're delivering and the partnership? I mean, selfishly, I think we nailed it. Um, so I really <laughs> right do on. think. Um, yeah, they did. Yeah. Yeah. Drop the mic. Exactly. <laughs> um, no, we, we're really getting a ton of good feedback in this space uh, because we listened. And I really want to iterate that. You, we could have taken, and let, let's be clear, Dell has always worked on the edge. Um, we've had servers out on the edge. We have an OEM team who does a lot of edge deployments. We've worked with partners like Atos and others for a long time. So this isn't new to us necessarily. Uh, the demand, the sheer demand is new. So taking what we've heard from customers and starting from the ground up and building servers that are purpose built for what they're meant to do, that's a defining factor of our hardware, maybe compared to some of even our competitors. We have competitors who have done stuff in space, they're great boxes, but at the core of what we've done, we've taken the fact that we are the leader or one of the leaders of uh, servers in the world and our sheer scope and supply chain built that together for something that will work for our edge customers. So overall feedback has been very good, and if it wasn't, um, I would be getting in trouble. <laughs> but, I, but I think so far we have it, and I think the other thing is the breadth of portfolio we have. Yeah. So as Arno was saying, this is our smallest gateway. You can ingest the data here, and then you can run it with an XR7620. This can hold two A100 GPUs, uh, compared to you know, the big behemoth we showed yesterday or this morning, uh, the, the eight butt one, you can imagine putting that in something about this big, and I know you can't see the depth here, but it's pretty small. Um, it, it's a really interesting proposition and it opens the door for innovation with our customers to where they're starting to think about use cases they never thought of before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this will enable it. Ah, the innovation cycle within Dell yes, and Atos just cycle. breeds that <laughs> innovation cycle within customers. Thank you so much, Kyle and Arno, for coming here, doing a show and tell, and really talking about the tremendous value that you're delivering with, with these technologies and the benefits it's going to enable so many different industries. We appreciate all your time, your show and tell, and your insights. Thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you. Our pleasure. For our guests, I'm Dave Vellante. I'm Lisa Martin. We have a great final segment coming up. You want to stick around. A great customer story from Cube alum Keith Bradley. We're going to be really talking about, he's the VP of IT at Nature Fresh Farms and how they're really enabling a cyber resilient organization. Stick around, we'll be right back. Mm -hmm.